G'day. Hey, uh, we're going to do a split this morning. Uh, it's winter time, so not ideal, but uh, it's a very, very busy hive. It's a beautiful location. You can see all these flowers up here. They just love these flowers on this wall here. So that hive's full, so we'll, uh, we'll do a split. I've changed my hive, the hive style. I used to make them all out of pine, but the pine was too hard to get. So I've started making them out of ply now, which I'm not real happy about, but um, it's the only thing available to me. So uh, and I've been coating them with a better quality sealer. Um, it's a quite expensive product, but I think it'll do better in the long run for sealing them off. Right now, I might just cover up. I'm a bit of a wimp because these are Tetragonula hocking dive. And I've run through the bush a few times with them chasing <laughs> me, so they're quite aggressive bee, and that's the mainly the ones I have at my place. So I found it's just best to cover up for me because they all get in my beard, my eyes, and my, up my nose. So it's just it's easier to cover up, I think. Righto, righto, we'll start things again. Come on down here. <coughs> Now, let's get you to have Sean put your camera in there and have a look. You can see how busy, how full that hive is. They're right up to the top structure there. That's quite a very busy hive. Quite a few bees there. Right. Oh, this is obviously a hive that was once budded by the look of that. Oh, there's a hole underneath there, so it was budded originally to a tree at my house. So this one's been living at my daughter and son-in-law's place. And as you, there's a few other hives down that way there, um, Ostroplebia, you know, those ones, so much quieter bee. where they start getting upset. <laughs> Clips are a bit stuck on. Come on. There we go. Oh dear. They are stuck on. There we go. Rightio. Hive tool. Uh, sometimes I, I've cut, when I break the, the seal, I'll use a knife and cut the corners. Uh, yeah, I might do that this morning. Let's have a bit of a look. around these corners. No. Hello, no. grandkids. <laughs> That's all right, Curly. Look at all the bees. Don't get in that curly hair of yours. <laughs> yeah. Too many bees. You get in your curly hair and you'll be all... Actually, I've got to say, they're not... I expected them to be very aggressive, but this winter climate has got them quite relaxed at the moment. They're not coming in on me. Right, let's crack this now and have a bit of a look to see how, what the brood looks like. Oh, it's very sticky. Let's have a look. Oh, oh dear, I just squashed a bee. I don't like doing that. Oh, that's a good split, I think. You can see the brood. Hanging up there on top. Wow. And there's a bit of brood on the bottom there, so that's quite a good split, I think. Okay. Now I'll just um, try and get some of this bit of poplars here on the on the box work. Just get rid of that bit there, I think. Right. Right. Look out, bees, get out of the way. Where's that brush of mine? Uh, this one here? Yep. 
Come on, get off. Try not to kill any bees. I don't like killing them. Get on, get in the way. Okay, that's about the best I think I'll do. Okay, there you go. Oh, sorry fellas or girls. Okay. So, you see the brood there. Looking around, can't see any queen cells. Hmm. That's the advancing front. You can see all the open pods there that haven't been laid in yet. What are these? Um, that's pollen pots, mm -hmm. the yellow, and the darker ones are all the honey. These honey ones, oh, you can see a lot of broken honey ones uh -huh. here. You can taste that if you like. Oh, <laughs> we've got a mask on. <laughs> yeah, you said that, you taste that. Taste that honey? No. <laughs> Too many bees. Okay, we better cover them up. Getting bees in a hair. <laughs> Okay, look out guys. Might just get that bit there out of the way. Look out. Just so it sits nice and flush. And Those what was bees. that stuff called? Oh, a bit, just a bit of propolis and a bit of their resin. Okay, so back of the breather. The back, go on everyone off, everyone off. Thank you, thank you. Come on. No oh dear, that was a bit. Okay, sorry girls. A few got squashed there though, I'm not doing that. Okay, right oh. So, these ones that are swimming here, they should be able to climb up and fly away in time, they'll climb up in that cloth. Okay, uh, that's all good. Right, got the perspex on with it so we can view them. Get these guys off the top. Come on, get off. <laughs> that's not working. <laughs> Two are landing every okay, time one let's leaves. Have a go. Come on, get off. Off, off, off. There we go. Right. I think you're always going to have some casualties. Yes, it's unfortunate. So how often does this happen or does it all depend on the hive? Yeah, some of mine have been, I've split fairly, um, if you're lucky, maybe every eight months or something. Mm -hmm. But to other hives of oh, uh, 16 months and I haven't had uh, enough activity or to uh, split them. Come on, off, off, off. There we go. Now, um, actually, I might, I might take these, take these things right off. I think. So, how do they know all these ones flying around? How do they know which one to go back to? Uh, well, the smell of their hive and all the pheromones and everything, mm -hmm. but they'll go back generally to where their position was. So the original hive is sitting there. Yeah. So I'll put the new, with the new bottom, at that old place. And hopefully then the, most of them will come to this new um, entrance. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna sit them side by side. So I'm not gonna separate them very far. So they'll actually interact with each other a fair bit. So some bees will go in and out of both hives for oh, a while. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that what old mate was saying yesterday? Yeah, uh, Nick Powell does a lot of, he really works a lot with bees and knows a lot, so I just listen to a lot of what he tells me on his YouTubes. Right, we'll just seal this up so no pests can get in. Look out girls, look out. Come on, out of the way. What pests are the worst, like the most notorious? Uh, Forward fly has been the worst at my place. Mm -hmm. Seems to be they come in. Um, I do see a lot of seraphim fly, but I have never lost a hive to seraphim fly. Are they native or introduced? Oh, I think they're all native, I think. Not really, no. Look out. Look out. Look 
again. Right. Oh dear, there's one. Get, get out of there. Okay, that should keep the pests out. And it's only a temporary thing because the bees will actually um, seal it all off. Yeah. Uh, it, within days they seal it off. So it's a temporary thing to stop the pests getting in. But anything you can do that will help them, especially after splitting, it's not a real nice thing for their hive, is it? Having a home ripped apart. Right. So if you didn't split the hive, if you just left it, would what would happen? Would their population just not increase or? No, they just fill fill the area that they have. Yeah. And um, if they ever wanted to expand, they would go out and make a new hive somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, some hives, I think they, they must, oh, I've got hives at home that I've had there for over 20 years, so. They're not too, they're all over me, these bees, but they're not, not too aggressive. Not as bad as I've had them. Where is that hole? Right there. Look out, get off. Got some bees everywhere. Okay. So is this a quicker way of getting two hives rather than bunting? Budding. Uh, budding sorry. Yeah. Sometimes I've had I've had buds that I've got three hives out of in 12 months. But I suspect it was a, an old log that the bees wanted out of. It was really old and deteriorated and rotten. Mm -hmm. And, and for some reason, every time I butted up to it, they just, you know, they fill the, the host box very quickly. And uh, as I say, I took three hives away from that one log in 12 months. And then other ones, where's that one? Bees. Bees, yeah. So that was the, where the original hive was sitting. So all the, all the foragers now come back and looking for the original position. And then uh, we'll put this new daughter hive just beside it there. Okay, can I take those things off again? I've got one under my neck and he's tickling my neck. <laughs> You're lucky he's tickling and not yeah, it's biting. Yes, not biting. They get in my beard and they give me merry hell. <laughs> Everywhere. Anyway, these ones by nightfall, most of them will all return to their hives. What do I do with the tape? Here it is. I've got a lot of these on my mask here. Sticky tape, yeah, this is, look at these. This is sticky tape. In there, unfortunately. Yeah, budding, budding's a much more. What do you say? It's not as invasive as this. Yeah. I think the word would be invasive. You're ripping their home apart. But I'm trying to build up my hive numbers, so that's why I'm doing this. Okay. And what determines the busyness of a hive? Like this one has been uh, crazy busy, but the others have been slower. Is it just the individual bees in uh, there? Yeah, I think it's the queen. The queen. Now, um, the message that she's sending out, I think it's the queen and, and the position, I think. Uh, if there's, you see this beautiful area here with heaps of food for them. But I don't know, really. I'm only a mug. You'd have to see Nick Powell or someone like that for better information. floating around here somewhere. This 
That'll be it. Thank you. Right, I'll finish this off and we'll go and have some fruit cake for morning tea. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> Bloody old. <laughs> nice cup of tea and a bit of fruit cake. So, do you have to put the uh, that black resin around the hole of the new hive? Uh, I have done in the past, but uh, I've started going now towards this hose because I, I like the idea of giving them more of a defensive area to defend when it's new. So I've, that's quite a length of hose there. It's about a lot of it's hidden, but say it's about that long. So I just think it'll give them more of a, uh, a chance of defending their hive against pests. Now, there's the daughter we might call her sitting up there. Okay, we'll try and get these bees out of this water. I'll leave them sit there, they can get off there in time. Uh, yeah, those ones there. I might pour them out on a bit of shade cloth, I think. I don't want to see them drown. There we go. Get out and dry out. Water, yeah. Water. 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 <laughs> Why did you need the warm water? Oh, well, I suppose I was, it, usually uh, when I've done it in summertime, sometimes that resin is, uh, the honey, you don't want spilt honey everywhere because all the pests will come in. Oh. So I usually just use a damp cloth and run it around the perimeter. So it the, there wasn't much of a mess there today, so I didn't worry about it. But it might be because of the cold weather, it was more uh, sticky. Okay, what do you think? That do? Yeah. Curly little end up with some in your hair there. Look. <laughs> yeah. Cup of tea time. It pops covered in bees. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Okay, let's go. I'll go away and then hopefully some of these bees will get off me then. Okay. Um, we'll, uh, they'll settle down in time. So do you feel that was successful? Oh yeah, it was a pretty good split I thought. Yeah. The brood looked pretty good. <laughs> Got a bit of brood in both of them. Very good. The uh, <laughs> the ripfire hive. Yeah, ripfire hive. Yes. 